first of all, I'm speechless. And those of you who know me, it's hard to find Cameron who doesn't want to talk. So <laughs> it's quite an uh, unusual occurrence. What is humanity all about? What do we do with our lives? Because when you look at it, such a fantastic organization coming together and having recognized some of the icons of this industry in the past and the people who have received this award before, by no means I'm in any of those classes. For heaven's sake, the only chip I ever designed never worked. <laughs> Honest. <laughs> At Stanford, it designed it never worked. And if you talk to Dr. Suhas Patil at Cirrus Logic, uh, talk to Shaheen Haddad at Centillium, or Dr. Paul Raj at BC, none of them will let me come close to any of our R&D facilities because they would say the average IQ is going to be dropped significantly, and they wanted to keep the average high so the company could be innovative. But when I think about what makes us a human, something that a friend of mine, Anusha Ansari, the recent astronaut who just came back from outer space, she said something that really stuck in my mind. She said that as she was looking down She was looking to try to find the country that she was born in, in Iran. And she had difficulty recognizing it, finding it, because from above there, it was difficult to see the lines that says, this is Iran, that's Turkey, that's Iraq, that's Afghanistan. For that matter, you cannot recognize where is US starting and where is Mexico ending. These are all artificial boundaries that have been created around us. They really have no meaning. Same thing when we think about the spirituality and the message of God. In every religion, when you look at it, it is always love and compassion. It has nothing to do with my way is the only way and I'm God's quarterback, and my way is the only way to reach to the God. I've had the privilege of studying a number of different religions, and they all talk of the same thing. So when we look at the whole situation from a macro point of view, if there are no real national boundaries, and if there are no real differences in the essence of religions, why is it that we have so many problems in the world? Well, one big reason is lack of knowledge, lack of tolerance, lack of understanding, which is used by some of our corrupt religious leaders or political leaders who try to incite us in the name of God or nationalism to go and fight, destroy, kill other human beings. And all it takes is think about the fact that we are human beings first. Keep thinking about Looking down on the planet Earth, you just see one unified planet, a tiny one. And if we think of that, that sets all of our priorities in life proper. And guess what? Technology can be an amazing tool to bring that message home, get our kids, use technology, communicate with other kids, learn about other cultures, learn about other religions, and hopefully we can have 
a great future. Now you might think, what could any one of us do? I'll give you an example. Within the audience in here, there is a good friend of mine who is somebody I really admire. I have many heroes in this room in here, but one of them is a gentleman called Jeff Skoll. After co-founding eBay, he went and started to make movies that would bring this message across. I had the privilege of working with him on creating an Arabic version of the movie Gandhi, dubbed in Arabic with Palestinian accents. We hired about 200 Palestinian actors and actresses, and we got the rights to show this movie in all different refugee camps in Palestine to show the people that there is a way to gain your freedom without shedding blood. So far, over 70,000 people have seen this movie and have held discussions about a different way to approach a conflict. Life is not all about inflicting pain and using violence. There are absolute ways, creative ways, that every one of us can go and do something about it. And Jeff was just a creative person who could go and do this. Now, of course, as I said, I have many, many heroes in here. Fabulous semiconductor industry has been blessed with many people. You saw in the video, Erwin Federman, Faraj Alai, John Gage, Mike Hackworth, these are all my heroes, the people who have done some amazing work. Of course, my family are my heroes. My mom and dad flew in from LA and they are here. Maman Jan, Pedar Jan, Khalil Khoshalam Umadin, Mochakera. I spoke in Farsi in case you didn't notice. I can talk about my partners on a daily basis at Global Catalyst Partners, what a wonderful job they do in supporting some of my crazy ideas by investing in US, in Japan, in China, in India, in Israel, and using business as a way to bring the world closer together. Koji, Vijay, Art, Calvin, Mary, Marilyn, Dana, a whole team. You guys have all been great partners working with me. And of course, my biggest hero, the one who I've loved for the last 30 years, the angel in my life, who recently, the last few years, I hardly ever see my wife, Zore. Last year, she spent nine months of the year in refugee camps from Sudan to Sri Lanka to Afghanistan. Tajikistan, she goes all over the world, Pakistan, goes to refugee camps to do something, to have an impact. The reason I say all of this is because it is the power within each one of us to do that, and all it takes is just a bit of work and the belief that we can do it. So I salute all of you who are going to rise and you are going to call yourselves the citizens of the world rather than just adhering to your nationality or to your religious belief, believe in God, believe in compassion, and believe in our humanity above all. I salute your efforts. And if I have gotten a number of you to think to go and be another Jeff Skoll, my hat's off to you. And thank you so much for absolutely honoring me with this unbelievable prize. Thank you.